Today, we'll build a React application that can communicate with a smart contract deployed on the blockchain. The smart contract will be for a to-do list to keep track of tasks. For example, walking a dog or taking out the garbage. When the React application is deployed, we can see the account that we're logged into using MetaMask, and then we'll also see the list of tasks and descriptions. We're basically going to have three parts. First, our smart contract will be deployed on Ganache, which is a blockchain running locally in our desktop. We'll need to initialize our Web3 instance to point to the contract ABI of our contract and also the contract address. When we retrieve the list of tasks using Web3, then our React app is going to display the tasks in the UI. In the React app, I'll be using function components, state hooks, and effect hooks. I'll be writing the code using the Truffle framework. After calling truffle init, you'll have a migrations.sol file and then also a initial migration.js file. I'm going to create our smart contract in a new Solidity file called uh, todo.sol because it's a to-do to -do list. So in this contract, I'm going to have a counter, which is going to be incremented each time we add a new item to our to-do list. I'm going to have a struct, which will hold our task. So each task is going to have an ID, a name, and a description. For example, one of our tasks will be to walk the dog and to take out the garbage. There are also some details. For example, the dog has to be walked at 9 a.m. and we have to make sure to take out the garbage before the garbage truck arrives. The tasks will be represented by a mapping from the index number to the task. Each time I create a task, I'll increment the count variable and then set that task inside the mapping. I've also created a second JavaScript file to deploy that contract. Before we can deploy our smart contract, we have to start Ganache. After starting Ganache, we can see that we have 10 available accounts and their associated private keys. Now let's deploy the smart contract with Truffle. We see that our smart contract has been deployed and the contract address is here. In addition, the account that was used for the deployment is this one, which ended in AEC40. This corresponds to the first available account from Ganache. After running the command to create a brand new React project, we can see our boilerplate here. I'm going to paste in the contract address from the command line that we saw earlier. Next, we need to get the contract ABI. The ABI for a smart contract was produced by the Truffle compilation. So in our smart contract directory, there in the build slash contracts, we have the JSON build artifact, and here we have the ABI. Let's copy this ABI. Now let's paste the ABI into this contract ABI variable in our React app. In app.js, we can reference the contract ABI and the contract address from the config file. I'm using effect hooks and state hooks. In this load method, I'm initializing a Web3 instance which points to Ganache running on localhost on port 8545. I'm using the state hook to set the first account into the accounts variable. I'm also going to initialize the Web3 instance with the contract ABI and the address. Then I'm going to call the count method on the smart contract to get the total number of tasks so far. Then this method retrieves the tasks from the smart contract and pushes them into this list. The load function will be called during the on mount. When we render the HTML, we're going to iterate over the tasks. And for each task, we're going to print out the task name and the task description. Now let's start our React app by calling yarn start. Our React app is loading as expected. At the top, we can see the account address that we're currently logged in to using MetaMask. And we have the list of tasks for each task, we see the name of the task and also the description. You can see that the account address that's printed at the top corresponds to the account that I'm logged into using MetaMask. If I switch the account that I'm logged into, then that address will also change. So let's switch to a different MetaMask account. So this new account ends in E3C4. So after refreshing the page, we should see this, this address also print to E3C4. And we see that that happens. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.